in a code to Kadua. Um, so stay tuned, Knea, and welcome. Thank you very much for joining us for this short Q and A session. Um, first of all, I would like to congratulate the filmmakers and the crews for these fantastic films that we've just seen the world premiere. And also thank you very much for all the protagonists for being so generous and sharing their stories with us. Um, yes, <laughs> absolutely. So my name is Kai Brennert. I'm with the Ray Foundation. Um, together with DocEdge, we've made a fund available to create documentary films for spe specially targeted um, at younger people. So I would love to um, invite Andrea um, up on stage as well, so we can have a conversation as well with Danek, who is um, joining us <laughs> from Phnom Penh, I think. <laughs> Hello, congratulations as well. <laughs> and congratulations to you as well. Please take care. Um, well, so three fantastic films, three very different themes, um, conserving the marine environment, um, negotiating your own identity within societal constraints in a way, and so many more topics, <laughs> and having representation, youth representation in national politics. Um, in the process of you making the films, how did you observe young people these days are actually embracing the citizenship. That's a good question. Um, I think the young people that I worked with um, were particularly articulate and very aware of what they wanted the world to be like and their place in it. And so part of their citizenship is actually finding ways to have a voice. And for this group, particularly, they harness social media in a way that allows them to have fun but also to send messages amongst themselves to actually make sure that voice is something that is always growing and developing. Great, thank you. Danek, how did you feel um, the people that you worked with and the young people were really getting to the core of the issue that they care about? Um, um, well, actually, um, there was something special about uh, this project. I think it was really inspired me first with the uh, main protagonist, um, C, um, who um, everyone see in the film, is that the, uh, it's kind of fascinating to me that when two years ago, when I first um, visit the place and um, get to know the island and the people and it just somehow it's feel a bit weird like in like part of like my new generations in in the country in Cambodia we kind of a bit uh some kind of in a loss in ourselves and and then I, I sort of like inspire from the main protagonist how that um, to start something, to to start something from place that close to us first is like his home, like to protect this um, environment surrounded his home. So, yeah, it it it's um, um it's that kind of energy and and especially it's coming from um, the love that he has and that could. Um, um, bring the energy to continue um, support and protect the environment. Yeah. Okay, so what is next then for you? You've made this film now. Um, it's got a strong message. Where do you want to take it? What do you want to achieve with it? I definitely wanted to show to the um, um, audience um, everywhere and especially in in my own country in Cambodia because I think that uh, this kind of um, environmental film um, we don't really have like much to access in a way that it's 
um, kind of a story that could um, reach to like not just for the young audience but like um, general audience in the country. So I, for me, I really want to um, um, find a way to uh, have the film shown to many people as much as possible, and at least for them to get to know that. Um, what do we have in in our place? Like especially for seahorse um, seahorses, like not not everyone in the country knows that actually Cambodia we do have seahorse, and that creature needs to be protected. Yeah. Great, thank you. And Andrea, for you, where do you want to take this documentary? You and your protagonists, who I know are many here in the audience right now. <laughs> I think for me, I want there to be lots and lots and lots more funding for this age group from about 13 to about 18, who often get forgotten by everybody, by the funders and by the platforms, because they don't always neatly fit into everybody's marketing budgets or audiences that needed to be reached. So I hope that a lot of this age group actually watches the film and talks about it and makes it have its own kind of momentum and that will encourage other people to take risks and listen to um, these young people. And I think that was perhaps a, a little bit of a unique thing in the way that we approached this is that all the young people that you saw on the screen and ones that you didn't actually had a quite a active role in directing the narrative and shaping how it was presented or um, if things needed to change or that they weren't happy with or that they didn't think worked for their for their audience. So I think there was a big um, learning that came out of it is that all the adults or older people that were involved really listened to the people that were the subjects in the intended audience. All right, then let's hand over the agency. Are there any questions from the audience um, to our two filmmakers that we have here right now? Just raise your hand up. We have microphones in the audience and please do speak into the microphone so Cambodia can hear us as well. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna give you some moments to think about um, while I'm asking another question. Um, I think we saw like three very different approaches to, to the filmmaking, something a bit more educational, something very discursive, something a bit more meditative. How as filmmakers do you approach the complexity of the issues that you're dealing with? Um, you, um, so the question that I wanted to ask is, um, there's a lot of different things. They're all, sorry, a lot of different things. They're all interconnected. Um, how do you make sense of them in the, in the first place? How do you bring them together? And how do you come to that point where you decide, okay, this is the way I'm gonna, I'm gonna go after through my art, through my filmmaking. Yeah, uh, actually, this is like my first time uh, making a, a documentary film. Uh, I I just made like two short films, and um, the two was really coming uh, in a very personal way, um, um, like really like focus on this perspective that I see things. And then to make this documentary, I think that is a very um, new challenge for me to um, not just um, bring my own perspective, how I see things about the environment, about the people who live in the island, about the marine life. It's, it's, about, it's about them, how to see um, um, through their perspective. So, I we want to shoot the film um, with the idea of um, um, trying to get all the information as we want we be looking for. Um, but I think that through all the inter interview with um, the two main protagonists, um, Sring Son and Roger, uh, they were like bringing me um, um, to to help me to to find like what what is this film and um, um, it's not just about um, um, bringing the problem the film is, is not just about like 
like showing the problem, what's happening in in Cambodia oceans and and everywhere, but it's also showing the complicity of the people who living depend on um, um, nature, like the people, because the island itself is uh, a fishing village, so we cannot ask them to stop fishing to to protect our ocean. It 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 cannot work that way and then we need to find a way and um and that cannot come from like two person helping uh to to do it it's come it, it needs to come with um other people as well so there there's problem there's beauty in it there's a complexity in it so i i just wanna how like this documentary, it's kind of like a trip to that area. Thank you. I guess similarly, this is a, a journey into the lives of quite a interesting group of young people who were really keen to have their kind of stories told in a way that they could control to a certain degree. I mean, they're, they're already really capable of self curating and, and creating content on their devices. And I guess this just gave them a bigger platform to sort of show the things that are really conscious for them right now at this stage in their lives. So it might not be the same in two years time or it might not be the same in 10 years time, but in the small six month period that we shot this, all of them have changed so much already. So at that point in their lives, they're really conscious of um, being told how they should dress and how to conform and I kind of think the feeling I got when I was observing them is that everybody tells them how that they should be independent and creative and innovative yep, we're going to tell you how to dress and we're going to tell you how much skin's acceptable to show and we're going to carry on um, making the I don't know, products or services in the way that we think is appropriate and we're not necessarily going to listen to you guys, but we're going to expect you to still be creative and innovative and be the future, but we're not necessarily going to give you the responsibility of making those choices or feeling good about those choices. So, Great, thank you. Now, are there any questions in the audience? Yes, there's one up there. <laughs> hello, hello, I'm here. Over here. Ah. Thank you. Yeah, I got a, a, a question, but first I would like to say thank you for um, this documentary. I got no idea that we got seahorses in Cambodia, to be honest. And to me, it's very mystic um, creatures. I thought only at the aquarium near the Mission Bay. But anyway, um, why, one, why did you pick up the, the topic of, of seahorses? And in Cambodia, um, you see people are aware of it. There are such things called seahorses. And um, under the ocean, did you find any other creatures that we are unaware of? And, um, and did you find any landmines there under the ocean floor? Under the, on the ocean floor, I mean, we're talking about Cambodia, we're talking about landmines as well, that meant a lot of people. And, um, yeah, but um, congratulations and thank you for um, you know, for um, the documentary is a bit, and we got many Cambodians here, youngster here too. So it's good, and it's good that we, with the technology we can see you in Cambodia. I hope this is real time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for coming. Um, yeah, why seahorse? I think that before, um, of course, seahorse is very like attractive um, um, creature, like. You could see, I think, like I, I, I only just learned recently that they they found like seahorse, but also because um, um, there were just um, a, a survey like recently in in the last ten years. So before that, not many people knows. I mean, there will be people know about it only like a fisherman, but um, the rest was just. Uh, we just learned recently that um, there were like several types of seahorse has been have been found in the coast of uh, Cambodia, and um, I think that to choose this topic 
is um, uh, I think in it's it's good in many ways because um, to protect the seahorse that means you protect a lot of things around them. So that I think that um, um, using seahorse to kind of like represent the other creature, um, um, it's a kind of like tool to not just, um, I think that it, it, it's kind of like a great tool to um, show to people because I think that people that there, there, there should be some kind of attraction first so that people would want it to get to know them to uh, to understand about them and then they might learn that they they are now at risk and and that would bring them to um, have the idea like want to um, um, do something to to protect them and um uh, so what what was the, the second question this is a follow-up question uh did you find any other creatures there on the you know in the ocean and also uh landmines there too oh yeah 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 um for for landmine um i haven't heard about landmine in um but i I'm sure there is, but so far we don't, I haven't heard like any like special, um, um, how to say it, um, that they, they do focus on the landmine in the ocean. What I know that from the CIMA, like the landmine um, organization, they do in the river, like a Mekong river, where they have um, um, specialists, like a diver who, go down there and find bombs um, um, under the river. But for the ocean, um, um, so far, um, I don't think there is a focus on that. And for the other creature, um, you do have like um, well shark, like, um, but it's, It, but but it's just like a a, a whisper, whisper. But um, it's not. There's like a small small species, um, like a sea slug, like there. They have like different types and turtle, but that's not many. Like um, like our team, they went diving, but they only saw like it's rare, like like. Um, to go die in the oceans, like you don't, it's just a luck. Like sometimes you see some um, big creature like whale shark or um, sea turtle, but um, you don't see that often. Great, thank you very much. Um, is there, yeah, there was another question in the back. Kia ora, um, kia ora koutou, ko Jodi Tako Ingawa. I want to thank all the filmmakers for the complexities in their docos. Um, but my question is for you, Andrea. Um, well, first of all, I agree that there needs to be more funding for the SAGE group, absolutely. So I don't know how we go about that, but I guess awareness is the first step. <laughs> um, we have to make some more noise and they need to listen, um, 100%. Uh, I wanted to know, it's such a, an exciting work, and I wanted to know from you um, what the best thing about working with this group of young people was and the most challenging thing, please. Oh, um, it's a little bit like parenting. Every age group has a different kind of hard to it. And I think just becoming organized became the hardest thing and then getting there was the hardest thing. And then working out where the story was gonna go was the hardest thing. So each time we got to a different stage, it was the new hardest thing we'd had to do or trying to work out um, the little tweaks to improve things and when to stop and when you'd run out of time and you couldn't make any more changes. So I felt like it was all kind of hard. It was all kind of a challenge. And I think the best thing about working with this group was they had so many things about them that were the same, yet the nuances and the things that made them themselves were so different. 
um, their perspectives on the world and their perspectives on fashion and style and what it meant to them and how they link that to a sense of freedom or a sense of challenging ideas. Um, they really use it as a tool. And so it made me, I think, really re-examine how I viewed how I dressed and how I shopped and um, the limitations I let others put on me, perhaps. So I think, you know, when you work with people who are completely um, open, because they were really very open, they didn't really um, censor anything they were sharing, it helps you to um, learn something about yourself. And I suppose that's the whole cinematic experience. It's I learn from them and then hopefully the audience learns from them and then there's that little bit of an, an emotional journey that everyone gets out of it. Yeah. Um, sadly, we're coming to the end of our little Q&A. I would like to thank both of you um, again very much for being here. Um, but I'm not going to let you leave before last quick question. In one sentence, what's the one message you want all of us to go home with? Um, one message. I know there were I know there were a lot in your film there were <laughs> yeah, there were lots of messages I guess um let lots of young people see themselves on screen reflected back at them so they can make choices that are representative of who they are and where they come from that's great and one message that we need to take home from sea within a sea uh love and protect the nature <laughs> well <laughs> great two wonderful messages that we can all go home with now thank you very much congratulations on behalf of the ray foundation and if i may on behalf of dockage as well to the world premiere of your films thank you very much thank you